thermometry is when we're doing a, a reaction where we're looking at a quantitative amount of product done through electrolysis. So we're running an electric current through a solution, we're producing some type of metal or some other chemical through a redox reaction, and we want to know the quantitative amounts. So I'm going to go through the physics background. Now if you're in chemistry and you've never taken physics, this is kind of be the thing that you're going to struggle with at first. Uh, and so, so this would be kind of the really critical details to be able to do this. So first of all, an amp is also called an ampere. It's also just A for amp is equivalent to units of a coulomb per second. So I'm going to try and write this in every way that you could possibly see. So a coulomb is a unit of charge. And then seconds obviously a unit of time. So charge per unit time will give you your amperage or your current. Now when you're doing this, What's, what's going to happen then is that coulombs per second is going to be able to tell you how many electrons are flowing past the given point. Now one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And so if you have one coulomb per second you can figure out how many electrons are flowing past a given point at a time and the assumption is every single one of those electrons is going to react with something. So before we move into those reactions one electron is this charge, but usually when we're looking at a chemical reaction, we're looking at a much greater quantity of things compared to one. So we want to be able to work in moles. So for a mole of electrons, there's 96,500 coulombs, or maybe a slightly more specific number than that. This is called a Faraday. It's the charge of one mole of electrons. And we're going to use this to be able to do stoichiometry problems for coulombetry. All right, so let's take a look at a couple sample problems to give you an idea on that. So the first one says, two amps of current is run for 12 minutes through a zinc sulfate solution. How much zinc plates out? Let's start with the reaction itself. So the reaction itself is that the zinc 2 plus is going to combine with two electrons to form zinc metal. The point of most of these electrolysis reactions is you're going to take some kind of metal ion salt solution and reduce it to the metal. You're trying to plate something with metal. Okay. Now the critical thing here is that two moles of electrons only gives us one mole of zinc. So that's the information we want from that. Now the two amps, we're going to rewrite two amps as two coulombs per second. Twelve minutes is our starting point. So we're going to start with twelve minutes as our given. And we're going to be using this with those twelve minutes. Now I want to get the time into seconds to match my units here. So I'm going to change minutes seconds, 60 seconds in one minute. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the amperage as a conversion factor. So I'm going to say seconds to coulombs, and two coulombs are passing by for every one second that goes by. So I'm using my amperage in the midst of my stoichiometry problem to eventually get into how many moles of electrons I have. Okay, next, I'm going to use coulombs to turn into moles of electrons. And this is where that Faraday constant comes in. So 96,500 coulombs is one mole of electrons. Now at this point, this is going to turn into a little bit more of a normal stoic problem. So let's re retrack what we just did there. We started with time as our given. We used our amperage to convert that into charge. Then we used the Faraday constant to turn that into moles of electrons. So this step and this step are kind of your two new critical physics things. Now at this point, I want to start using this balanced reaction. So now I'm going to say for every two moles of electrons, that I will get one mole of zinc metal plated out. And then I'm going to turn that into grams, just for fun. So one mole of zinc metal gives me 65.39 grams of zinc. And now I can go through and I can do 12 times 60 times 2 times 65.39 divided by the Faraday number divided by 2 and it will tell me how many grams of zinc I get. Now for this one I got 0 0.49 grams of zinc. Now one of the things you should be aware of is that electrolysis takes a long time to function. So even though you're running this for 12 minutes at a pretty high current, 
you're not going to get a lot of metal. It takes a long time to plate, which is nice because then you can plate a very thin layer of metal around things when you're doing electrolysis reactions. Okay? So this is one type of problem that you would see if you're given the amount of time and the current, then you're looking at a situation where you can set up a simple stoic problem as long as you know to use the amps as coulombs per second to convert and that you need to interject the Faraday constant into the middle of that conversion. Now a different type of problem that you could see is this. So it says here we get the final answer. 0.82 grams of copper is obtained from a battery running across copper 2 chloride solution for 6.2 minutes. What current was there? So for this what we're going to do is we're going to start by the fact that current, our amps, is how much charge compared to our time. So we need those two values to be able to figure this out. We have our time it's just a minute, so we're going to have to change that into seconds. But aside from that, we really need to figure out how much charge is involved in creating 0.82 grams of copper. Now again, we want to start with the reaction. Copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons turns into copper metal. So we get the ratio that there are two of these necessary to make one of those. Then, what we'd want to do is we'd want to work backwards to figure out our charge. So 0.82 grams of copper. And we're going to go ahead and convert that into moles. And then we're going to say that each mole of copper required two moles of electrons. Okay, now we're getting really close to charge. We want to figure out the coulombs. So now we're going to use Faraday's constant. One mole of electrons is this much charge. Now at that point we set this up correctly. Now we can plug in what the charge is. Okay. And so if we multiply that all out, we get that we have 2,490 coulombs of charge to be able to make that much copper. So what we can then do is we can take 2,490 coulombs and divide that by how many seconds that is, which is that times 60, which comes out to be 372 seconds. So our coulombs divided by our seconds will give us our amperage, and this comes out to be 6.7 amps. Now again, that's, that's quite a bit of copper for 6 minutes, and so the fact that we have a large current running there is not a surprise. So, so to backtrack on that a little bit, really having an idea of being able to use your reaction for the stoichiometry, knowing that a Faraday is how much charge in a mole of electrons, and then lastly being able to use coulombs and seconds in conjunction with amps, that's really the three critical things to add into a normal stoich problem in order to be able to do a coulometry problem.